Oil versus renewable, who's winning? Well, a comment I regularly get on the channel about climate change is, I'm just an individual, what difference can I make? Besides, the biggest producers of CO2 are not even the UK. It's only a tiny 1%. Blame China or America. Now, in reply, I normally state that when a general election's imminent, you're likely to get your local EP, uh, MP candidates knocking on your door asking for your vote. They're all out doing it because they know that just a tiny handful of votes can mean the difference to them between being in power or being unemployed. But we often miss what is actually going on, swamped by the media headlines. Recently, America got a new president who, well, seems to favour the oil giants. But we're told that renewable energy is the cheapest, safest form of producing electricity in the world. Which one is winning out? I'm Dave. I'm actually finding it fascinating to discover who's listening to whom. Let's reveal what I've found. It's a fascinating journey. The Dogger Bank wind farm just off the east coast of England is the world's largest wind farm able to power an average of 20% of the UK homes. It is stunningly big, yet as we're told, only we only produce 1% of the world's CO2. So what's going on? It doesn't seem to make sense. For a clear and concise answer, we need to travel to another side of the world, to the oil centre of the Western world, Texas. When you think of Texas, you probably think of Dallas, oil, derricks, black gold, undisputed king of fossil fuels. For over 100 years, the very identity of Texas has been inseparable from the oil and gas under its very soil. It's an industry that's built fortunes, shaped politics and powers the nation to this day. But while Texas is producing more oil than ever, it's also in the middle of a shocking transformation because while everyone's looking at the oil rigs, a quiet revolution is taking shape in the sky. And the numbers don't lie. Texas isn't just flirting with green energy, it's on track to become a global superpower. So how on earth did this happen? How did oil and gas, capital of the Western world, become America's unlikely green energy leader? And why is almost nobody talking about it? To understand the sheer scale of this revolution, you have to ignore the political noise and just follow the money. And the money is now starting to pour into renewables. Back in 2010, the entire state of Texas had less than 100 megawatts of solar capacity. As of early 2025, that number has skyrocketed to over 32 gigawatts. That's enough to power millions of homes. By the end of 2024, Texas had installed nearly 80% more combined solar, wind and battery capacity than the next closest state, California. Yeah, the green yuppie state. This isn't a slow and steady transition, it's an economic tidal wave. Over the past five years, solar generation in Texas has been growing at a blistering pace. While natural gas still provides the largest share of the state's electricity, wind and solar combined accounted for roughly 36% of the power on the Texas grid in the first nine months of 2025, up from just 18% five years ago. And very little of this is coming from the oil giants. But the boom's just getting started. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, ERCOT, which manages the state's grid, is staring down a future dominated by the sun. According to their own reports, developers plan to add a massive amount of new solar power by the end of 2025. Now, to put that into perspective, that's a huge addition to the state's current solar capacity in just the next couple of years. And beyond that, a staggering 158 gigawatts of solar projects are waiting in the queue for approval to connect to the grid. This isn't just growth, it's a complete reshaping of the energy landscape happening at a speed almost no one thought was possible. So why is this happening in Texas of all places? And the answer lies in the state's location, climate and the uniquely independent and fiercely competitive energy market. Just like we are blessed with an abundance of wind, and rain, Texas has an overwhelming excess of sunshine and quite a lot of wind. Both are provided almost every single day, totally free of charge. Unlike the rest of the continental US, which is split into two major power grids, most of Texas operates its own and is managed by ERCOT. This independence has its famous downsides, but it also creates one of the most cutthroat free market energy systems in the world. 
For decades, this system favoured the state's abundant and cheap natural gas. But in the energy world, price is king. And in the last 10 years, the cost of utility scale solar has plummeted. With few remaining state level solar incentives, this boom isn't being driven by green politics. It's being driven by pure, unapologetic capitalism. Solar farms are now simply one of the quickest and cheapest forms of new electricity you can build. In the aircraft market, if you can produce the cheapest electron, you win. And right now, when the Texas sun is beating down in the middle of the day, that electron is coming from a solar panel. This has created a gold rush. Investors and developers are flocking to the wide open spaces of West Texas, not for oil, but for sunlight. Projects with names like Hornet Solar Project, the Danish Field Solar Farm, and the massive Samsung, Samsung Solar Energy Center are sprouting up, some capable of powering hundreds of thousands of homes just on their own. This isn't just about building power plants, it's about building an entirely new economic engine for the entire state. It's not just solar. Texas also is rather windy and has long been the nation's leader in wind power with over 42 gigawatts of installed capacity as of late 2024. The state's early investment in transmission lines to carry wind power from the gusty plains of West Texas to the big cities was a move championed by Republican leaders two decades ago, setting the stage for the renewable dominance that we see today. In Texas, renewable energy was never just about the environment, it was purely about the economics. But here's where the story gets really interesting. You'd think the state's powerful oil and gas industry would be fighting this transition tooth and nail. And while some individual politicians are, for reasons we can't imagine, the reality on the ground is uh, way more complex. In a strange twist, some of the biggest names in fossil fuels are quietly becoming major players in the green energy game. Why? Well, two main reasons. First, their own operations are incredibly energy intensive. Running sprawling oil fields in the Permian Basin requires a massive amount of electricity. And with solar and wind power now being the cheapest option, oil and gas companies themselves are becoming huge customers, signing deals to power their operations with renewables. Trump might be interested to find out that for the oil companies to drill baby drill, they are increasingly having to use renewable electricity to run those rigs that do the drilling. It's cheaper, and therefore more profitable. It's a hugely hypocritical but pragmatic business decision just to cut the costs. Well, second, they see the eventual writing on the wall. Major companies like Occidental, Shell and even Coke Industries are starting to invest billions in what they call energy transformation technologies. Some of them are just token gestures, some designed just to make oil and gas more profitable, while others are now buying solar projects outright and building out battery storage. Even the University of Texas system, which built its colossal endowment on oil and gas royalties from the 2.1 million acres of land it owns, is now leasing huge swathes of that same land to wind and solar developers. It's a stunning example of diversification, albeit at a very early stage, where the very ground that used to produce oil is now hosting the wind turbines and solar panels powering the future. They aren't ditching the oil and gas. In fact, Texas oil production hit a record high in 2024. They're not daft. But they are aggressively hedging their bets, using their immense capital to build a new energy empire alongside the old one, just in case. Of course, this rapid, almost chaotic transformation isn't without serious challenges. The Texas grid, designed for predictable power from fossil fuels, is groaning under the strain of this new intermittent reality. The sun doesn't always shine full speed and the wind doesn't always blow. Well, this creates a massive need for the one thing te Texas is desperately short of, that's uh, storage. Without a way to store all that cheap solar powered uh, energy, during the day, uh, for use in the evening, the grid still has to rely on natural gas plants to fire up and fill the gap, often at a very much higher cost. 
The grid's stability is on the line. And the solution is batteries. And just like with solar, a battery boom is underway in Texas. As of mid-2025, there was an almost unbelievable 177 gigawatts of battery storage projects in the ERCOT inter interconnection queue. Now, not all of these will be built, but it shows the immense interest. These batteries will be the critical shock absorbers for the grid, soaking up excess solar power during the day, discharging it when the sun goes down, creating a more stable and reliable system. But getting there is a race against time. The internet interconnection queue is clogged and building the transmission lines to move all this new power from West Texas to cities like Dallas and Houston is a slow, expensive process. These are not small hurdles. They are fundamental challenges that will define the success or failure of Texas's energy future. The revolution is happening but the infrastructure is scrambling to keep up. This shift is one of the most significant and underreported economic stories in America today. It's a transition for the benefit of the residents, driven purely by market forces, not mandates, and it's rewriting the future of a state famous for its allegiance to fossil fuels. But what do you think? Is this rapid shift to renewables a model for the future or a risky bet that could threaten the grid? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want more deep dives into the surprising economic shaping our world, just make sure to subscribe. I'm Dave. <laughs> <laughs>